We're ready? Sam? Sorry. Let me know when you're ready, please. Might have forgot what I'm going to say now. <laughs> Thank you, Thank you, Commissioner. Thank you. Well, I'd like to start by announcing that uh, at about 12.30 this afternoon, I signed a direction that restricts entry from Victoria into South Australia for people who have been in one of the high-risk locations as specified on the Victorian Health website. This means that anybody who has visited one of those sites at specific times of designated days will be prohibited from entering South Australia, and it's important to note that those people should be quarantining in Victoria at this time. Uh, those people who have already travelled to South Australia from Victoria and have identified as having been in one of those high-risk sites will be required to quarantine for 14 days and also undertake the COVID testing on day 5 and day 13. They'll also be required to wear a mask if they're moving about in public for the purpose of those tests or if they have any exemptions from SA Health. This is being done in order to ensure that we are protecting the South Australian community from the uh, positive case that has been identified in Victoria. So I'm happy to take questions on that or I'll move on to my next topic. Uh, yeah, have, there been, have there been many people, do you know, many people coming to South Australia? Uh, I don't have the specific number, but we, we did have uh, uh, flights arriving yesterday and our staff at the airport were, were greeting those people and advising them their, of their obligation at this point. But it's important to note, this only impacts on those people who have been to those high-risk locations, and at this time the list is quite limited, so we don't imagine this is going to have a significant impact on people's in, uh, plans to travel um, from Victoria to South Australia, or those who are returning um, at this point in time. We don't think there's going to be a huge impact. Commissioner, what does it mean to re the resourcing of <coughs> the airport? Are you having to put more resources back down there to handle Melbourne Plus? No, we have maintained a resource commitment to the Adelaide Airport, and those resources have been uh, redeployed uh, in periods of low activity to support people with the QR process as they arrive in South Australia from interstate. So uh, we are able to flex those people to specific tasks and greet certain flights based on the level of risk that uh, is apparent at the time. Are police playing any role in the reviewing of the security vision of the play or, or the investigations into how this suspected breach occurred? Not at this stage. Uh, that's being managed by SA Health. Um, the, the principal uh, investigation is about infection control and how that might have spread. So. If we're able to assist or support that, um, we'll certainly do that. But at this point, it's being managed by SA Health. This direction that you put in place is similar to the one that's in place with Sydney. What advice do you give to people who are planning to go to either Melbourne or Sydney this weekend, next weekend? Well, um, if you are travelling to tra uh, planning to travel to Victoria or New South Wales, it's important to remember that there are uh, elements of risk associated with those jurisdiction at this time. There is no concern about where you visit specifically because the high-risk locations relate to specific times on specific days. Obviously those days and times have passed, so there is no further ongoing concern for those locations, but it is about being mindful of the fact that uh, whilst we have some element of concern, there is a possibility that circumstances might change and we'd encourage people to be flexible with their travel arrangements so they can uh, make changes if necessary. Commissioner, I assume you're reaching out to these people who have arrived from Melbourne to see whether they have been in these high-risk locations? Uh, that's that's the purpose for visiting, uh, meeting people at the airport, which is the pr predominant um, avenue for people to arrive. But also SA Health, using the, uh, the contact tracing processes, are also making contact with Victorians who have arrived from South Australia and providing them information so they can do a self-assessment as to whether they are affected by these high-risk locations. Will police be checking on people who need to be quarantined to make sure they actually are? Uh, we've been doing that since the very beginning of COVID-19. Uh, the whole COVID-19 response, and we'll continue, continue to do that to ensure that people are reminded of their obligations around quarantine and, and protecting South Australians from the p possible outbreak as a result of people who may have been exposed. We are relying on people being honest here, if they mm. have been to those hotspots and they are here in SA. What's your message to those people, and are there penalties if they don't do the right thing? Well, if we are able to establish that someone has been um, uh, dishonest in their declaration, then they may face a penalty as a result of that. But given the volume of people who are transiting between states now and the, you know, the relative level of comfort that we enjoy in Australia, uh, it's simply not possible to uh, verify, stop and verify every single person entering the state. So you know, we are relying on the community to do the right thing. Uh, they've supported us uh, substantially right throughout the whole COVID-19 response, and this is another layer of that level of support that the community can provide. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Roy. You're up. I was going to ask, Commissioner, um, before I really cut you off there, um, 
where can people find out where, where the hot spots are? Um, is there somewhere on either Safe Polls website, SA Health, or is it Vic Health? They can use? visit directly the Victorian Health website, or they can uh, access that sort of information by uh, going through the SA Health website as well. Um, we'd simply encourage anyone with any concerns to check the SA Health website. That will give them the information they need, or visit directly either New South Wales Health or Victoria Health. Just while we've got before we, we move on to yep. our um, I guess what was your initial reaction when you heard that there may have been a leak in a South Australian community hotel? Well, given the uh, level of community interest in how the hotels are being managed, obviously I was very concerned to hear that we had a possible um, uh, leakage from our hotel quarantine quarantine system, but I think uh, from the outset we've said, notwithstanding the efforts we're putting in place to protect the community from uh, this possibility, uh, given the highly infectious nature of COVID-19, uh, it is still a likelihood that we need to accept that there may be leakage and uh, that we need to be in a position to be able to respond to that. The, um, the nature of this virus is such that uh, we can't entirely mitigate the risk of someone contracting it in the hotel quarantine environment. And while we're still playing a part in repatriating Australians and other people who have a right to attend, visit Australia, we need to make sure we're doing everything we can. So the work that's being done now to establish the cause for this uh, transmission is obviously being done so we can continue to modify our processes and make them as safe as possible. From your perspective, would it be better to have a system in which leaks were less likely in hotel quarantine? Well, I'm not sure what that system would be. I know that there's been a huge amount of work put into um, hotel quarantine security by police and SA Health uh, to mitigate risk as much as possible. But we are relying on the compliance of people who are travelling to Australia in terms of how they behave whilst they're in the hotel system. And we are trying to combat something that is highly transmissible. So uh, as much as we do uh, put those steps in place, there is still that possibility. And I'm not sure what any other solution exists that would allow us to accommodate the number of people who are seeking to return to Australia in these circumstances. The solution that's proposed is basically putting air between the people that are staying in the room. So you have to have separated little, little homes. Uh, that's the main proposition that seems to be touted at the moment in other states. What are your thoughts on that? Are you talking uh, a circumstance like Howard Springs, where they have de yeah, dedicated rooms? Proposing that, the, that a specific facility is built like that, with, with separate little homes for their quarantine system. Well, that would be a, a question you should refer to SA Health as to whether that is a, a reasonable and pragmatic response to the current situation. What we're doing at the moment is honouring our commitment as a state to uh, support people returning to Australia. Uh, the facilities we have at our disposal at this point in time are commercial hotels which are being taken over by SA Health and run as a Medi Hotel. That, that's what we have at our disposal and that's what we're managing at the moment. Can I just do oh, the sorry, rest of the QR sorry, stuff? Yes, yes, yep. Of we'll stick on that and then you can... Yes, yes, Okay, the other purpose for um, the press conference today is to announce uh, the commencement of an operation we're calling Operation Trace. I think it would be fair to say that uh, people would be recognising a level of complacency within the community regarding uh, people QR coding into businesses and venues where that's an obligation. In order to combat this level of complacency and in recognition of the important role that QR codes play in us being able to release and relax our restrictions, we are going to be running an operation using plainclothes police and uniform police uh, where we'll be checking on people's compliance with QR coding into businesses including supermarkets, restaurants and other businesses that uh, require the QR code. This operation will run uh, commencing from the 13th of May and be reassessed on the 21st of May. Uh, the purpose here is not to uh, issue expiation notices in the first instance unless we see blatant disregard for the requirements, but to remind people of their obligation and, and pull people up who are simply walking past those QR codes. We have somewhere in the order of about uh, 900,000 to a million people checking in every single day, and that's to be commended. But I think if you speak to any person in the street, they'll tell you about uh, their observations regarding people simply walking past those QR codes. So this is a, p a small part that we can play as SA Police to remind people of their obligations. We'll also be reminding businesses of their obligation to ensure that QR codes are readily available, that they have a hard copy, secure sign-in process for people who don't have mobile phones, and that they are doing their bit to remind patrons about the need to check in to their premises. These steps are being taken to make sure that if we do have an outbreak in South Australia, SA Health are in the best position to respond and minimise the likelihood of us having to move to more harsh restrictions as a result. 
And I think the outbreak uh, from South Australia's Medi Hotel is a great reminder to us that whilst this particular individual travelled to Victoria, they could just as easily have moved back into the South Australian community and the importance of QR codes would become very relevant to everybody at that point in time. So the reminder is there for everybody. This is a time to start thinking about your behaviour. If you're simply walking past QR codes, there is a real likelihood you'll be stopped by plainclothes police and uh, we'll deal with that in those circumstances. What, what happens after the 21st of May, from the 13th to the 21st, you're not going to be handing out expiations unless it's blatant? What happens after that? Oh, well, well, we'll assess on a daily basis and if we find that uh, people are disregarding the warnings, and then we can reassess our approach and uh, people may find themselves facing an expiation notice as a result of their blatant disregard for the conditions that are in place to protect the community. Does the operation only go for seven days? Does the operation only go for seven days? At this point in time, yes. And you don't have the intention to hand out fines just on the spot? Well, the whole approach by SA Police during the COVID-19 response has been to work with the community to provide education and support and, in the first instance, give warnings. That will be our, um, our approach in this regard. But I'm not withdrawing the, uh, the uh, ability for police officers to make an, an assessment based on the circumstances where an expiation notice may be appropriate. And as a reminder, that's $1,060 for individuals or $5,060 for businesses who disregard the advice they're provided by South Australia Police or SA Health. How many will be involved in this? Uh, we're not just disclosing the number of officers. Uh, and it's based on our availability given other operational demands, but we are making a concerted effort to visit as many places on a random basis as possible so that we push this message, message as forcefully as possible. Do you anticipate there will be a large number of people being spoken to or potentially fined, seeing as you've said there's a lot of complacency in the community? I anticipate there'll be a large number of people being spoken to, and my hope is that they'll go home and talk to their friends and relatives and talk about the fact that they were stopped and spoken to by police, and hopefully the message will move through the community that way, that we take this seriously and it's important that people do the right thing. Is there any way that SAFEHOLD are actually going to keep track on people they've spoken to so that they know they've been spoken to in the past and will be fine? Certainly, we have the mechanism to do that. Uh, if we stop and speak to someone, we'll be taking their name and we'll be able to follow up as to whether this is the first or second or third time they've been given a warning and we'll assess their level of compliance on that basis. Do you know how many people have been given that $1,060 fine? Uh, I don't know off the top of my head, but we do have those numbers. Uh, but it's for a range of different breaches. It's not simply just for uh, failing to QR. We, anyone who breaches the Emergency Management Act receives the same fine. So it's under the one section. Um, but we can give you the total number of fines that have been issued. Is this going to be mainly geared towards individuals attending shopping places and, not, and just walking past the codes? Or is it also to, to businesses not displaying them? Or what, what's the major use? Substantially, this is about people who simply ignore the QR codes as they enter a, a business premises. And I think everybody here would have their own personal anecdotes about having been checking in and other people, a stream of people, walk past. It's happened to me personally. and. Uh, I find it quite frustrating that you know, a significant number of South Australians are doing the right thing, yet there are others out there who either have not been listening to the messages that we've been pumping out since December 2020 or simply choose to ignore them. Uh, but can I also say that if we do find that businesses aren't making it easy for their patrons to um, check in, we'll be speaking to those businesses as well, giving them the opportunity to modify their practices so that you know, we're all doing our part to minimise the risk of COVID spreading through the community. $1,060 is quite hefty fine. Do you think that's why police are perhaps reluctant to dish them out? Do you think if it was, say, $200, you could just be dishing them out all the time and the word would spread that fines are going to be coming? That's a, that's a possibility, but uh, I'd, I'd attribute it to the fact that right from the outset, uh, our position has been that COVID-19 is a unique set, set of circumstances. South Australia Police have never before been involved in this type of uh, uh, response to a pandemic. Uh, I understand that the community have had to adapt to practices that have never existed before and our preference is to work with the community, provide people that advice, give them warnings, uh, but we will take action if people completely disregard the advice we're giving. Commissioner, just how active have the police been in, in recent weeks when it comes to visiting businesses? In, in particular, we've heard reports that they've been through the hills and, and also on the Fleury. Uh, we've had a, a constant effort uh, towards compliance checking right throughout the, um, the last 15 months or so, uh, with at least 100 business premises being checked on a daily basis. And we'll continue to do that until there's a change in posture or where SA Health determined that there's a better way to do that. So we'll, we'll keep checking businesses. Um, invariably, right throughout the whole process, we've been giving warnings. And I have to say, most businesses, uh, based on the information I'm provided, are trying to do the right thing. They don't always get it right. And we work with those businesses. And uh, that's the approach we'll continue to take. We 
officers and not someone just pretending to be. Legitimate police, police officers, officers will have, <laughs> they will have identification and they they will identify themselves to the people they're speaking to. Is there any particular prompted the launch of this operation, or is it a combination of things like the outbreak where we had a twenty percent decline in people checking in recently? Is it we, I monitor the, uh, the statistics in relation to check-ins, as do my team, and uh, whilst we have identified that there's probably a percentage of people who have never checked in, uh, we have seen a slight decline overall and a continuous decline, so we think this is one step we can do to remind people of their obligations. We acknowledge this is not how we operate in Australia. We don't normally have to check into businesses, but we are in difficult circumstances, so we need everyone to do their part, and that's why we're out there to remind people. Would you consider a lesser fine, a smaller amount, and who, who would consider that or put that through? Well, the, the current uh, expiation regime provides for a $1,060 fine under the Emergency Management Act, so that would be a matter for government if they wanted to provide a lesser fine. But I, I think we've done very well so far in terms of giving people formal warnings um, and reserving that issuing of a $1,060 fine for those people who really sort of um, turn their nose up at the, the hard work of the rest of the community. That, that's where those fines should be levied. And I wouldn't want to see countless people being issued with $200 fines. I think that would probably be counterproductive in terms of uh, working with the community to support our COVID-19 response effort. In um, larger places, there's usually COVID check-ins at the beginning and then throughout the sort of shopping experience. So how are you going to know that someone's you know, deliberately sort of flouted at the beginning I think we can. Uh, whilst that's a possibility, I think it's uh, it's reasonable to assume that people who are walking past well signposted QR codes uh, probably don't have that intention. Uh, but we will be speaking to people and reminding them their obligation. And it's important as an individual to note that your your attendance at a at a location that uh, may be the subject of uh, an outbreak. Um, the timing that you are there will dictate how you are treated by SA Health if we do have an outbreak. So it's 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 in your best interest to be accurate in terms of your time of arrival so you're not adversely affected by any quarantine requirements. What's the most worrying thing about people not checking in? Well, I think if we just uh, look back on the, uh, the, uh, the outbreak, the leakage that we've had from a South Australian hotel in the last few days, uh, it's a stark reminder to us that COVID-19 is in our community. We are currently containing it within many hotels but there is no guarantee that we won't have an outbreak in the future. We need the capacity for SA Health to be able to quickly trace anyone who's been possibly exposed and deal with those people as they need to be dealt with, whether that be quarantine or COVID testing or, or isolating until they have a negative test. The QR codes give us an enhanced ability to do that. Uh, failure to QR means that we are diminishing our capacity to respond quickly. It also uh, inhibits us in being able to relax restrictions because we need to know that we are doing everything we can to get on top of a possible outbreak. One of those steps is QR codes. Um, Other questions, please? While we've got you, um, just uh, both to kind of get your reflections on um, what transpired in Port Lincoln yesterday morning, and are you in a position to provide us an update with regards to where that investigation is at? Uh, look, I don't have any specific update in relation to um, the tragic set of circumstances that uh, occurred yesterday in um, in Port Lincoln. Um, you know, our heart goes out to the family. Uh, this is a tragic loss of a young boy, and I'm also uh, obviously concerned about the responding officers and also the driver of the truck. I don't, I don't think anyone who was involved in this um, very tragic loss of life um, won't walk away you know, devastated by what they've seen and what they've had to deal with. Okay. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.